Hi there. Welcome to the Bible Talk, a podcast brought to you by the Songdo International Seventh day Adventist Church. I'm your host, Angie Kim. Happy New Year, everyone. The Bible Talk is our new podcast series being launched on YouTube and Facebook. The Bible Talk is a sub program under our YouTube channel called The Bible Time. In the Bible Talk, we discuss a wide range of topics relating to Christianity, the church, and the Bible. It is an open and safe space to talk about the questions that we may have had at some point in our daily Christian walks, but did not get an opportunity to freely discuss those within church, at home, or elsewhere. Well, today's episode features Samuel Dana. David Cho and myself, Angie Kim. We discussed our thoughts around the topic of women's ordination. Do we need women to be ordained for church leadership roles and for the gospel ministry? Happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Today, we're going to talk about women's ordination. It has been an issue among SDAs, and not just SDAs, but some in other church denominations. People are arguing over this issue because now some people are saying because mm-hmm. uh, traditional roles of men and women have been changing. So mm-hmm. now we have to think about changing uh, women's role in church. When they talk about women's ordination, we're not really talking about uh, women elders. We're talking about female pastor. So what are your thoughts on this? Um, First of all, uh, I've been to churches in, I guess, at least three different countries uh, in the U.S. and in Germany and in Korea. And uh, I have to say, because these are different countries and they have different cultural values or social norms, Mm -hmm. I do think that those different social values and norms were indeed reflected in the church uh, leadership setup as well. And so in Korean uh, SDA churches, I think, yes, I have yet to see women elders, for instance. They do serve as deaconesses, for instance, and they uh, help out with the Dorcas movement um, and different children's programs, but it seems like their role is quite defined. Um, <laughs> Uh, whereas in the U.S. and also in German churches, um, I I did see uh, women elders. Um, there are also regional variances, I would say, in those two countries, but they seem more receptive of the fact that, yes, women can be leaders, like um, almost playing at the level of a, a pastor or even supporting the pastor very closely as, I don't know, can I say a vice kind of, chair of Mm -hmm. the church basically people who run the church because in the case of germany they do have a shortage of pastors in general and so uh, my local church pastor at the time had to serve three different churches in the area in the bonn uh you know frankfurt area and so when the pastor wouldn't come to our church to preach um it's when the women elders took up you know the the job of running the church basically just making sure that the church program would run smoothly and you know different people would come to contribute to the main worship service and and so on so yes uh given the fact that our own seventh day adventist church um whether they're in you know depending on which country they are located in depending on which region i do think it's not just one way uh, that I've seen how the church uh, leadership is set up, but there do exist these uh, variances. And so I don't think there's really one right way, but they do reflect the norms and cultures and traditional values of the societies that the churches are based in. So yeah, I want to first give that thought. Um, So maybe do you guys want to say something in reaction? I think... um uh, from my end, I think this. I should go. Okay, so sorry for the post. So what I was saying is uh, issues about women ordination, or women playing leadership roles. 
significant ones in the church is not just limited to Adventist church. Uh, it cuts across all religions, not just denominations, because uh, historically the background of um, this issue about the gender roles or the various roles between men and women has been much entrenched in all this, and especially when it comes to, apart from the social or the general roles in even political system and other places, uh, we find that women's role have been relegated to the background. And this has penetrated or permeated into the main, even the religious bodies, not just uh, even Christianity. But when it comes to Adventism, which we are trying to say, and um, I think uh, this has been a debating or an ongoing issue. But just as she said, culture and even the country setting and even the orientation of the people tend to even influence how things are run in the church and how these rules are strictly followed. But other places you find that uh, general conference has been uh, maybe told that they don't have strict rules even to order a particular church as to how they should ordain or not ordain. So it's been even since the 1960s when this issue came up and there were committees set over to find out how roles even at the local churches or at the divisional level and even at all levels should be done. It's uh, the background shows that, okay, it came a point, sometimes the debate had been that, okay, they should leave it to the local churches to decide to the extent that they don't want the general conference should have that authority to direct that you have to obey strictly by this. But it has been an issue even until 2012 where there were other committees set up to still look into this matter. But the position of the church has been that uh, there shouldn't be discrimination, just like other places, against peoples, not just uh, a leadership role, maybe not just about men, women, even against the age of people, and even against maybe the race of somebody, you can't become this. Because in other places, some particular uh, race or particular people cannot hold some. So the overall idea has been that don't discriminate against this level. So when it comes to general conference, they are still saying that, okay, that's what I've read about. Don't discriminate even against gender. But more specifically to the point, personally, I think um, this shouldn't be too much of a big issue to the church. Why? If we don't prevent women from becoming deaconesses, and like women, men can all become deacons, right? Women, men can become secretaries of the church. Women, men can become cleaners in the church. Women, men can become, maybe, you can all play the roles. There's no street rules. Uh, or we, women, uh, uh, women shouldn't preach even. So why should we make this issue about ordination the big header? Because I think that you can still do the work of God, even not being ordained. So does it mean that it's only those who have been ordained can really serve the Lord? That's my perception, or that's my thinking. If that's the case, then it means that apart from the few people who are selected in the church and ordained, anybody in the church cannot do the work of God. But that shouldn't be a hindrance. If you are a woman or a man in the church, and you haven't been ordained. You still have, because some people feel that if they are women and they've not been officially ordained, they feel left behind. But that shouldn't be a barrier to them. And I think that whilst, just as she mentioned, you go to some local churches, maybe the most experienced person there at that time is a woman. So should you say that because she's a woman and she can lead the church, you don't give her the rule? That shouldn't be a role. It should depend on the local context. Otherwise, if she falls out and maybe the only men there are the young people or inexperienced, they are going to lead the church into a wrong direction. So they sh I, sh I think they should look at the local context and the situation happening there. And I feel that maybe as a woman can preach just as a man, as a woman can lead Sabbath school, or as a woman can be a church treasurer, as a woman can be a church secretary, there shouldn't be anything that prevents a woman from leading or taking part in any other role. But I don't even see it as uh, being a Christian or being an Adventist, we should take out the idea that you are a leader of a church. You are a servant. And being a servant, nobody, even slaves can become servants. So everybody should be given the opportunity to serve. 
Because Jesus Christ wanted us to be an example to him that we should all be servants and not masters. That's what I think. But there are people who are saying, who are saying that what about uh, their, what about those people who want to study theology and officially want to become pastors and take care of church? They're raising questions. We we know about all the mindset that we should have, servant leadership, or we don't have to have too much focus on um, our position or ordain ordainship or titles. But now there are certain people who officially want to become a pastor. So that the issue at point is female pastor. Should we allow female pastor in the church officially? Because now we all know that we, women can become elders. Women, women, women can do all kinds of things in the church like men do. But the only one, the only one thing left that they can't do officially is becoming a pastor. Okay, so I may not have been well uh, informed about this. Is there any biblical text that say women cannot become ordin or women shouldn't be ordinate uh, be be, uh, uh, be given ordination? No. So our basis or the foundation of all our doctrine should be based on the Bible. It's just that in history we find that all the church leaders had been all the prophets and all those things mostly had been men, and it depend it it, it depended on the the, the culture orientation mm -hmm. and how the societies were run, the kinship, everything was there. But if you look at that perspective, if the Bible doesn't clearly say that men only can become leaders of a church, then we just assume because the most examples we found in the Bible were men, mm -hmm. then we say women cannot. Then the basis on that is even flawed. flawed. That's what I think. So let's our, all our faith or all our directions or all our doctrines to be based on the Bible and the Bible alone. That's yes. what I think. Yes. So that's why, I mean, that's exactly why it has been an issue. Because Bible, the Bible doesn't clearly say that women cannot become a priest because they didn't have pastor back then. So the similar role of priest at that time would be pastors today. We just assume that, oh, because Christ, all his disciples were men, right? And most of the leaders then were men, men, men. We found... If you found people or women who even were more committed to God, Mary Magdalene, the first result, she was even the one who went and met Christ. At the, uh, at the, she went to the tomb. They were those who were very close, even though, you know, the society itself showed how women were supposed to live. But that didn't prevent them from doing or being committed. And we know that maybe men, women, you can't just be mingling together every time. Maybe, okay, the men were comfortably moving together, the women were comfortably moving together. But nothing prevented them. When Jesus Christ visited Lazarus, when he died, the Bible says that his friends was Mary and Martha, right? And he went there, Mary was there, they were all shared. He didn't say, oh, you are a woman, I'm not sharing this first-hand information with you. So what I think is that... Uh, Maybe the church may even accept other weird doctrines, and that shouldn't be based on that, or because we accepted a woman, to be, or we are accepting women to become leaders now, that is why we are also accepting other things. Then it means they wanted to even accept it in the beginning. I know our church doesn't celebrate Christmas, but now it's creeping in gradually. There's no correlation between allowing Christmas celebration and Christmas trees in the church to because it's a woman leader. I still see that because I, I feel very guilty if a woman gets up and says that, oh, I want to become a pastor. That's what I feel. It's a calling, right? Mm -hmm. I want to become a pastor. Then I go to the pastoral school. Then the church says, you can learn about the Bible. I can learn about the Bible. It's all about, I want to propagate the word of God because the Bible says Jesus Christ was living. Go into the world, spread the word, tell them about this, this, this in the end time. Then the woman gets up and says, I want to commit all my activity to spread the word. I want to be an evangelist. I want to be a pastor. Mm -hmm. I just want, it can't just be the name only pastor. I just want to spread the word of God. Then the church says, no, we can't allow you. That, is, that would be discriminatory in the first place. 
just as maybe uh, I can also get up and say, I want to become a pastor. Then somebody says, oh, you can become a pastor. Maybe you are coming from a poor family. It will be very discriminatory. You get that? Or somebody say, oh, you are very short. You can become a pastor. In the same way, somebody saying you can become a pastor because you are a woman. Yes. I know there are other tones. Even, you know, we shouldn't combine that with the current uh, issue about promoting gender equality. I have several. I think we all have our different roles. It's not shouldn't be about equality. It should be about equity. Because me and my father, we are not equal. Me and my mother, we are all not equal. My mom and my dad, they are not equal. You know why? There are some things my mom can do, my father can never do. There are some things my, mom, my father can do, my mom cannot do. But there should be equ equity. Everybody have their ability. My mom can be very strong in a way my father cannot do. But I don't see that thing about equality to me. But everybody should be treated on the same level. Opportunity equally. But let's say me and my father, we are not equal. And that's what I think. Yeah, just to echo uh, my thoughts on that as well. I, I like how Samuel said it should be about opportunities, the same kind of opportunities. Uh, and when it comes to people, different people having opportunities, there should be an equity. Yeah, And that's a theme that I've been kind of dwelling on personally myself because I'm never somebody who used to see things through the lens of uh, gender equality or... You know, I don't even know like what the feminist movement is about. I was never really interested in this uh, ideology debate, you know. But then what I experience at work, you know, just some things just happen and then they make you wonder. I wonder if that person is seeing me differently because I'm a woman from a developing country. I mean, Korea is still a developing country, uh, especially in the context of uh, environmental, you know, uh, problems or climate change. You know, because we, although we are very advanced, we haven't really committed so much <laughs> in uh, curbing the greenhouse emissions or whatsoever, right? Anyway, so just some things happened at work that made me wonder why is that person from, you know, the U.S. or Europe treating me like? You know, I bring val uh, valid positions and I, I make important contributions uh, in team meetings and, you know, when we dis uh, discuss an evaluation project. However, why are they so rude to me whenever I bring some valid, you know, <laughs> points and I raise my hand to question their theories and thoughts? And, and then, you know, I have a colleague uh, from India and he told me, yes, he's a man. But because he comes from India, uh, a developing country, he felt that it doesn't matter how much you're qualified. It doesn't matter that you have a PhD. You may have lot, a lot more experience. But then he always was looked down upon uh, compared to his you know, counterpart from another European country or wherever. And when I first heard that, I thought he was being overly sensitive or overly emotional. But I wasn't someone who could judge that because this is the kind of experience that has been accumulated and it, it's very personal to him. So I'm not in a position to really judge that he's being overly sentimental or overly emotional, right? And surprisingly, although when I first heard about his experience, I was like, oh yeah, that's too much, man, you know? <laughs> but now I also have experienced some things that kind of made me think. I really cherish my Korean name, for instance, but I just felt really ridiculed uh, when some other, you know, colleagues would spell my name wrongly. And then somehow that vibe, you know, is there. And so I am actually considering, uh, okay, maybe it's time for me to really come up with an English name, you know? So rather than going by my first uh, Korean name, I need to present an English name so that they would, wouldn't really see me through the lens of, oh yeah, a lady from a developing country, a Korean at that, you know? So what I'm trying to say is, I think it hasn't been fair from the very get-go, men and women. And it's true that women have been kind of treated as second-class citizens for a very long time. And this is also in the history books, right? And if God gave a woman an ability, a special ability to be able to preach really well, 
and that's her passion, and that's something that God put into her mind, her heart, then yeah, let her be. Let her pursue the pastoral uh, journey and become a pastor and serve other people. But if a woman you know, is more like traditional, I can say, and say, oh, I can serve God the best through my ability to you know, do these services uh, as a deaconess or by cooking in the church uh, kitchen, and serving the people with a nice meal. If that's her desire and passion, yeah, let her be. You know, why do we have to say, oh, you know, women can only do this, this, and that, but not really um, serving as a pastor or preaching? And also in my case, when I was uh, growing up in church, I was, I was always inter interested in just uh, going up to the podium and then speaking and sharing my thoughts with people or presenting something, right? I was just that's something I like to do. And other friends, whether men or women, they were not interested in doing at all, like doing anything at all for church. So obviously, I'm the one who always preached and I always shared my thoughts uh, with the congregation. So yeah, just because I'm a woman, I should have somehow be, you know, no, 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 you know, it's not really your place. But guess what? There was nobody else who wanted to do it. So if, as long as the person has the willpower and you know, has the desire and the person gives in that much uh, work, you know, that much effort to prepare for that uh, role, yeah, I, I don't see why women have to be banned from you know, becoming pastors. And actually, I wonder what happens to these women who go to uh, Samyuk theology department, for instance. They are theology students. But once they are done with their studies, how are they really using um, all their knowledge and the experience they may have gained uh, through the theology program? I rarely saw any female pastors. The only one time that I met someone who said, oh, I'm a pastor and I graduated from Samyuk Theology is when I went to a workshop. <laughs> um, I think it was put together by the Korean conference and it was about marriage, yeah? To prepare the young Adventists for marriage and what kind of thoughts they should have, how to go about planning or how to pray for their future spouse, right? The funny thing was, she was not married herself, <laughs> but she was working as a, an Adventist pastor, but I think she said uh, she can run the church, but she cannot give baptism and that kind of marriage workshop is, that's the kind of activity that she's authorized to do or she's endorsed by the conference to do. I may be wrong exactly like what her position was, but that's the only time I met somebody who professed to be an Adventist a female pastor in Korea, right? So I just think that as long as the people have the right uh, talent, which comes from God and passion, and the person is convinced that God is calling her to do something, it's true, it's correct that we let the person pursue her dreams and goals, you know, that are in line with what God wants her to do. So yes, it's about equity in terms of the opportunities that we get. So I strongly support um, this theory that also Samuel talked about. Yeah, so there are lines that we should hold and there are lines that we need to cross to progress. Yes, yes. So just as um, we've all discussed, I still go to the foundational issue that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. He created man, in quotes, or man, woman, in his own image. He didn't say, and he created man, woman differently from he God's image. And God always commands us to be like him or we should follow his will. And God didn't say, oh, men should follow his will this way, women should follow his will this way. We have the Ten Commandments as examples. He didn't say, stealing, men can steal, women cannot steal. It's equal for everybody. Or it's same. Let me use that word. It's same for everybody. He says we should do his will. When the punishment came over the Israelites, when they were going through all these things, it came equally. And when somebody sinned, he didn't say because the men sinned, he will do this and that. So I still feel that. And when it comes to the issue, our main action on earth is just to live, uh, grow, 
worship God, let his word go through the world, because that was the great commission, just as I mentioned before. And in the end, we should let the world guess his word. That's what I still feel. And if the word has to get to the world, we know that generally women are even more than men on the surface of in most countries. So if we are neglecting or we are saying that these women cannot take part in this uh, very important role, then it means maybe it could kill some of them. Their, their interest is even pursuing because this is what I feel to do. Personally, I've been, when I was growing up, I loved in the church, just as you mentioned. I love preaching. I love this. So the, there was this idea even from pastors from my local church. Oh, I should become a pastor. I said I love to do the work of God, but I don't want the, I don't want to go to a pastoral school. So if there's somebody who is also interested in doing the work and see that, oh, I want to really become a pastor, why don't you allow that fellow? And you say, oh, you can't do that because you are a woman. I think God will not be happy for that decision. Because what is the wrong part of it? You know, I think just as the cultural orientation, even until recently, even the advanced countries, most of them didn't even allow women to vote. You know, I think there is this cultural connection even in Asian times. Women were not allowed to vote. Women were not allowed to join the army because the perception had been that women cannot do this. Even some education-wise, women couldn't go to some extent. People think, oh, this is where you belong to, right? And it goes all the way, apart from women, even to some class of human beings. This is where you belong. This is how you can be. So in that case, I think we should remove that tag where we stereotype or we have this kind of thing that, oh, these people cannot do this, these people cannot do it. It should come. And the issue about working, worshiping God is that it's from my mind. It shouldn't say, that, oh, because my father was a church elder, automatically I'll be a good Christian. No. It should come from my conviction. So if that fellow comes and say, I'm convicted or my spirit or my mind tells me that this is what I really want to do. I want to become a pastor. I want to become a church leader. I want to commit my whole life to worshiping God. Why not allow them to be? Then I think because we also make the issue about the nation like that, in quote, the leadership. You know, now people are pursuing church leadership like political position. People even fight over church position. Who becomes the president? Even local conferences, if they give you the stories there, people are taking it like it's like a worldly kind of uh, 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 organization. People are losing focus as to what the church really stands for. So people will even do everything to become maybe the conference president or even the local church leader. Even if it means they will do anything dirty. So in that case, people use that worldly kind of thing to suppress, oh, they don't want more competition from women. Maybe just because this woman is very good or that. They use that and they use the Bible in quote or the tradition in quote. No, 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 no. We are, we are breaking or we are crossing the line. In the first place, I would like to say there isn't a line drawn on this in the Bible. But there is a line drawn on uh, issues about other things we shouldn't do. That should be. We shouldn't steal. We shouldn't do this, we shouldn't do that, we shouldn't do that. But when it comes to women taking up roles, women really played a great role in the Bible. And when Jesus Christ came, when he even took uh, the uh, 12 disciples, he didn't specifically uh, say, I ordain you, go and do the work. You get that? And after, the, uh, after that, he called the other 70, right? When he called, like specifically say, oh, I make this, uh, go. he just said, go into the world. So that should be the issue. Yeah, that's what I think. Yeah. Thank you. So, yeah, Bible, in, when you look at the scripture, God does tell us about, I mean, he warns against homosexuality. He, he doesn't like that. But about women's ordination, he doesn't, it's not, th there's no clear statement about this. So maybe as, it, as our culture progresses, maybe we can also change the roles of men and women. And I, I also think uh, in Christianity, uh, one person, I, I personally, that's what I feel, and I've, people have shared the same thing. One person who brought about doctrine that stirred up great controversy in the Bible had been Paul because of his background, his intellect. And so sometimes he makes this analogy we know 
Christ is the head, man is the head of the family, those kinds of things. So he makes it to some extent that we are not even able to understand it clearly. Then people base on that. Oh, Paul said this. I know Paul came from his background. And we shouldn't think that everything Paul, some were advised to the church to make sure they streamline issues, right? They found that, oh, even in Peter's time, there were some ways this current church, this particular church, they live. So he has to put some rules to check those things at that point. So just by saying that, people capitalize on that and say that, oh, Paul says we shouldn't do the women cannot do this, women cannot do that. It's sometimes taken out of context because these things he was saying was because of a particular issue he was trying to address. And, you know, even other places you see saying that, oh, people even misinterpret Paul's message just for their selfish gain because the guy was very intelligent. He came from a background, and at the same time, when he was addressing all these issues, he addressed them based on what was happening there. But to the extent that people even think women cannot preach in the church, they should shut up in the church. But that's not what, because there was a particular contest Paul was trying to address there. Because the women were abusing the situation there and overriding what was happening. So he just said, women, when you come to church, keep quiet. If you have anything, go and ask your husband in the house. But does it mean that that was what was happening everywhere? No. They are only misinterpreting what Paul was trying to address. And there are other controversies. I'm not saying the Bible has problem or that, but it should, because the guy's level of thing was different and he should be read in context and not use that to generalize. Yes. I think you made a good point on taking things out of context. We have to be careful about reading. I mean, w when it comes to reading the Bible and also when it comes to reading Ellen White's writing too, too many people are taking a statement from a context and they mix all of these uh, context, I, I mean statements from different contexts and they mix it together and they come up with a new strange theology and new standard. I know, I mean we all know that sometimes opponents of women's ordination, they bring these Paul's statements as biblical evidence. We can deduce from his statements that women should not be leaders or pastors. But we need to look at the context and we also need to read thoroughly why Paul was saying at that specific time to specific people. I mean, just looking at the Adventist church alone, I mean, you know, Ellen G. White, <laughs> she was a prophetess, right? And she played an integral role in the Adventist movement and how the Adventist church came to be, right? So I don't really understand if God chose Ellen G. White to be the prophetess of the time, then why shouldn't other women be permitted to do uh, whatever, you know, God put into her heart. So it may be preaching, it may be prophesying. I mean, it, it, you know, the person had to really um, see visions and, you know, hear from God. But yeah, I mean, we shouldn't really try to define these roles. I think those uh, who oppose women's ordination are maybe more drawn to the traditional boundaries that we have um, because I would say the Korean society is still, to a large extent, you know, we've been kind of governed by the Confucius uh, principles. And uh, according to the Confucius uh, principles and ideology, there are things that, yeah, women cannot do uh, as men can do, you know. And uh, just hearing you guys converse, I thought about an interesting example. This is a hypothesis, right? But let's say my grandfather and my grandmother my grandfather, as a man, <laughs> had all the opportunity that he could have, right? So he started uh, his career as a teacher in a high school, I believe, right? And then it was my grandmother who really supported him, like, to become what he could become. But she didn't get the formal education. I don't think she even graduated from uh, an elementary school back then, you know? And I think she was born in 1930. So, you know, and my grandfather was one year younger than my grandma. Let's say, despite these uh, differences in terms of the quality of education, you know, academic qualifications, 
or because my grandma also didn't have a job. I mean, I mean, she was a housewife and a farmer, but not the kind of profession that the society would look at as, oh, you know, what a respectable woman she is, right? Let's say my grandpa and my grandma got converted and they decided to join a church. So they come to church and then let's say they both had a desire to serve, right? Actually, my grandma more so than my grandfather, let's just assume. Would the church welcome her approaching them and say, oh yeah, of course, sister, you know, if you want to serve the church in this way, yes, you know, you could be our deaconess or you could be our elder. Please, you know, God does not um, discriminate people based on their, I don't know, quality of education, whether they got a degree or not, based on gender. We are all equal before God, right? We are all loved by God. I don't think so. I don't think the church would have welcomely said, sure, go ahead, sister. Let's, you know, let's see w how you can contribute uh, to the church. I think they would have more willingly uh, listened to my grandfather, for instance, or even if my grandfather was not interested, they would have tried to convince him because he ended up becoming the superintendent, education superintendent. And so, oh, Mr. Superintendent, right? Welcome to our church. And we would love for you to play a certain role because you know that would just be a huge honor and a lot of people would follow you, let's say. You know? So I honestly think that my grandmother was way smarter than my grandfather, personally. Okay? But in terms of the kind of opportunities that they had in life back then in the 1930s, 40s, it was vastly different. My grandma was forced to become a wife a mother at a very young age and she didn't really you know get to pursue education or whatever she wanted to be so yeah I, I don't think it's fair and yes I also agree with Samuel that without even without the ordination we can do many things to serve the church however one thing I do recognize is that sometimes because we live in this sin sick world <laughs> It's a world, you know, not like a perfect world. I do think having that kind of official recognition does matter. In God's kingdom, it wouldn't, right? But in today's society, I think it does matter. It's kind of similar to why I'm also seeking to get an English name, for instance. <laughs> and I, it's better for me to get some kind of title. Like, you know, so for instance, I was very uh, lucky and honored to have been nominated as a member of the um, personnel council of my uh, organization. The personnel council only has nine members and I raised my hand and, and I said, I wanna be a vice chair, you know? I don't think I could commit you know, all the hours to serve as a chair, but a vice chair I can be. So I am, as a result, a vice chair, one of the two vice chairs, right? So yes, <laughs> thank you. I wanted that. You know, it's not just because of the title, I wanted to play that role. I really uh, like to chair different meetings and just support the group in that way, you know, helping prepare the agenda and thinking about how to make our point stronger when meeting with different leaders and, you know, senior management people. But that kind of title does matter. That's also what I was thinking. It came to my decision-making matrix, right? So, yeah, I, I would say we shouldn't be barred from serving the church in the manner we want and using our talent, God-given talent. And the, you know, so something like ordination shouldn't really be a crucial matter. However, in today's world, I think it does hold value, having that kind of a title or recognition. Um, and so I would say, yes, um, it would be good uh, to have women's ordination officially so that um, any women who want to serve God as a pastor can do so and there is this official uh, recognition and acknowledgement. It's okay to do so, it's perfectly fine, and yes, we want you to play that role as well. So, If any woman got a calling from God, then she should become a pastor if she got a calling from becoming I mean from God to become a pastor. So this has been a good conversation and thanks for joining us today.
I'll see you next week. And thanks very much too for moderating this section. I think it's been very exciting and uh, enlightening uh, listening to you both. I think uh, we really try to look at the historical to now to how we can better understand this and make rational decisions. And our foundation, as I mentioned or mentioned before, is should be the Bible and Christ and Christ alone should be our example. Mm -hmm. If Christ didn't discriminate against women, we shouldn't do that. We should give everybody an equal or same opportunity. Let them do the work of God. Nobody should be barred from doing the work of God based on their calling. That's what I personally feel. And mm -hmm. thank you again. That was a perfect summary. So thank you, Samuel, and thank you, mm -hmm. David, for moderating this. Uh, I also learned a lot. I felt like I was back in college or <laughs> a university having you know, a, a very structured, well-organized debate, uh, sharing, you know, our thoughts. So thank you so much for this opportunity. And many thanks to the pastor, who's also monitoring our <laughs> audio quality as well. So thank you. We hope you enjoyed this episode of The Bible Talk by the Songdo International Seventh-day Adventist Church. Do you have any questions or thoughts you would like to share with us on this episode of The Bible Talk? If yes, please leave your comments and questions on our YouTube channel, Bible Time, or on our Facebook page, Songdo Adventist Church. We'll be back with more insightful and interesting dialogues that matter for the Christian youth today, so stay tuned! That's all for now. Signing off from Songdo, Republic of Korea. Thank you for listening, and God bless you!